Hi everyone, and welcome back. I have a second example for you on approximating integrals using Taylor polynomials. The end goal of this example is to find a 7th degree Maclaurin polynomial that approximates this function, the integral from 0 to x of 1 over 1 plus t cubed. I'd also like to find an error bound of that approximation so that my approximation and error bound are valid for x between minus 1 half and 1 half. The derivatives of g of x aren't going to be particularly nice. So if I can avoid computing these when I go to look for my Maclaurin polynomial and error bound, that would be really helpful. Rather, I'd like to begin as we did in the previous video by first finding a Maclaurin polynomial approximation and an error bound for a related function, in this case 1 over 1 plus u. We'll then use that polynomial approximation and error bound to say something about the function we're actually interested in. Note that the ideas in this video are going to build pretty heavily on the stuff from the overview and example 1, so please make sure you're feeling comfortable with that material before proceeding to the remainder of the problem. Okay, so we're looking for a 7th degree Maclaurin polynomial that approximates the integral from 0 to x of the function 1 over 1 plus t cubed. It'll be helpful to first draw out a roadmap for how to get to a 7th degree Maclaurin polynomial. We're told to start with the function f of u equals 1 over 1 plus u. Well, let's think about this. If I could find a second degree Maclaurin polynomial for this function, and I replace u with t cubed, that would give me a sixth degree Maclaurin polynomial for the function 1 over 1 plus t cubed. I would have to integrate those polynomials to approximate the integral of this function. And by integrating the polynomials, the degree is going to go up by 1, from 6 to 7. So that's going to be our plan. We'll start by finding a quadratic approximation for 1 over 1 plus u. As an exercise, I'll let you verify that the quadratic approximation is 1 minus u plus u squared. And of course, we have a remainder term, r2 of u. When we replace u with t cubed, we get a polynomial approximation for this function given by 1 minus t cubed plus t to the 6 plus the remainder term, r2 of t cubed. Now, of course, we need to estimate this remainder term. So we're going to start by estimating the remainder term for f of u. According to Taylor's inequality, since we're using a quadratic approximation for f, we should be looking at the third derivative of u, which I'll let you verify is given by this formula here. By Taylor's inequality, the size of my remainder term, r2 of u, is bounded above by a constant k times the absolute value of u minus 0 cubed divided by 3 factorial. This constant k is going to be an upper bound for my third derivative in absolute value. But what values of u should I be considering here? Well, let's take a step back and think about what we're trying to do here. We're trying to approximate the integral from 0 to x of the function 1 over 1 plus t cubed. As given in the question, x has to range from minus 1 half to 1 half. So the variable t, which goes from 0 to x, will also be able to take on all values between minus 1 half and 1 half. Okay, but u is t cubed. So if t is taking on values between minus 1 half and 1 half, u is going to take on values between minus 1 eighth and 1 eighth. That's the range of values that we need to consider when making our error bound. So the question becomes, how big can this function get in absolute value as u ranges from minus 1 eighth to 1 eighth? Well, if you think about it, this function will be biggest when the denominator is smallest, and it will be smallest when u is minus 1 eighth. So when it comes to picking a k value, we could take k to be 6 over 1 minus 1 eighth to the 4. Let's put that in here. 6 over 1 minus 1 eighth to the 4 we still have the absolute value of u cubed, and we're dividing by 3 factorial, which is 6. Ah, we can throw out these 6s, and we can simplify this expression here to get an upper bound of 8 over 7 to the 4 times the absolute value of u cubed. Okay, 8 over 7 to the 4 is not a particularly nice number, so I'm going to round up here and use a nicer upper bound. If you punch 8 over 7 to the 4 into your calculator, you'll see this is a little bit less than 2. So I'm going to use 2 as my constant, and I have the absolute value of u cubed. There is my upper bound. All right, what can we say about the error term for our next function, 1 over 1 plus t cubed? 
Well, if we know that the error term r2 of u is bounded above by this expression, and we know that u is the same as t cubed, then we should be able to say that the absolute value of r2 of t cubed is bounded above by 2 times the absolute value of t cubed cubed, which is the same as 2 times the absolute value of t to the 9. And this is going to be valid for all values of t between minus 1 half and 1 half. Let's see how we can use this error bound and our Maclaurin approximation to approximate the integral of this function from 0 to x. Okay, so this part of the problem is going to feel very similar to what we did in the last video. We've approximated 1 over 1 plus t cubed with a Maclaurin polynomial, 1 minus t cubed plus t to the 6, and we have a remainder term r2 of t cubed. We've also found a bound for that remainder term, given by 2 times the absolute value of t to the 9, that's valid for t between minus 1 half and 1 half. We're now interested in understanding the integral of this function from 0 to some x. Well, just like in the previous video, we're going to separate this integral into an integral of the Maclaurin polynomial and an integral of the remainder term. Just like before, this integral is going to approximate the integral we're actually interested in, and this integral is going to tell us about the error of that approximation. So let's start by looking at this first integral. An antiderivative of the function you see here is given by t minus t to the 4 over 4 plus t to the 7 over 7, and we evaluate from 0 to x. The remainder term I'll handle on the next slide, so for now we'll just leave it alone. When I plug in x, I get a Maclaurin polynomial x minus x to the 4 over 4 plus x to the 7 over 7, and once again we leave our remainder term as it is. So there you go! We found a 7th degree Maclaurin polynomial for the function that we were interested in, and we have an error term that we have to estimate on the next slide. To do that, we'll once again be using the triangle inequality and the bound we found on the last slide. Okay, so our function is equal to this 7th degree Maclaurin polynomial plus some error term. Our last step will be to estimate the size of the error. We're going to proceed as we did in the last example by considering the absolute value of that error term the integral from 0 to x of r2 of t cubed. Now using the triangle inequality, we could bring this absolute value inside. That would give us the integral from 0 to x of the absolute value of r2 of t cubed, dt. Ah, now we're in a position where we can use our error bound. We know that the absolute value of r2 is bounded above by 2 times the absolute value of t to the 9, right? Now at first glance, all of this may look totally fine, but there's a small subtlety that we have to be careful of. It turns out that when you use the triangle inequality for integrals, you really need the bounds to be in the correct order. You need the upper bound to be bigger than the lower bound. So this step really only makes sense if x is greater than or equal to zero. We'll have to treat the negative case separately, but it'll proceed in a very similar manner. For now, if x is positive, that means that t, which ranges from 0 to x, will also be positive. So we could rewrite this integral as simply the integral from 0 to x of 2t to the 9 dt. I'll let you verify by finding an antiderivative and plugging in x that we get an upper bound on our error of x to the 10 divided by 5. Next, we're going to consider the possibility that x is negative. I'm going to treat this case in much the same way I handled the case above, but I first need to swap the bounds on my integral in order to use the triangle inequality. So my integral in absolute value is given by something like this, and when I swap those bounds, I'm going to introduce a negative sign. But that negative will die under the absolute value. So I have the integral from x to 0 of r2 of t cubed dt. Next, I use my triangle inequality. I bring the absolute value inside to get the integral from x to 0 of the absolute value of r2 of t cubed dt. Once again, I can use my error estimate. I know that the absolute value of my integrand is bounded by 2 times the absolute value of t to the 9 dt. Ah, but check it out. Since x is negative, so too will be t, which means this absolute value is really minus t. That minus will allow us to switch the bounds back to the original order. We could write this as the integral from 0 to x of 2t to the 9 dt. And once again, by finding an antiderivative, we get an upper bound on our error of x to the 10 divided by 5. 
In this example, we happen to find the same bounds on our error in both cases, but in some situations it could be that these differ by a factor of minus 1. So it's important to consider these two cases separately. We end this problem with the following conclusion. The integral that we were interested in is equal to this 7th degree Maclaurin polynomial with an error of approximation of at most x to the 10 divided by 5. For x values between minus 1 half and 1 half, this error is very small, at most, roughly, 1 over 5,000.